Check it out, YouTube! I bought an army trailer. This is my new toy, and I love it so far. This thing is built incredibly, incredibly well. This is something I, you know, it'll sound arrogant, but this is something I would build. Nothing on it's cheap, nothing on it's wimpy. It's got standard 16-inch wheels. Luckily, I did get a spare rim with the from the guy I got it from. It was included with the deal, just like this hitch. Has a pintle hitch. I love pintle hitches. I never really used one until a couple years ago, but they're about to become a staple here on my channel because the uh, the trucks and the equipment that I have isn't exactly getting any smaller. It also has surge brakes. I know a lot of people don't like surge brakes. I've never had a problem with them, and I like the advantages they offer. It also has these hand brakes, and they they offer a super firm, super positive action when you lock them, which I really really like. And I like that they're manually operated, so you know, it's just, it's really simple and it's done. This is the axle it has. Like I said, I think you can fit a lot more than three quarters of a ton of payload in this thing. But it is really, really, really well made. It's, it's literally built to be military tough and to go through war zones and whatnot. And I couldn't ask for a better utility trailer, quite frankly. So I've learned quite a bit about these trailers since I found this one on the internet and then went to buy it. And what I discovered is there's one model designation for this tub and then another one for this running gear. So for instance, this tub is an M101A2 3 quarter ton dealio and the trailer is chassis, trailer cargo, 3 quarter ton M116A2. So. If you look for an M116A2 trailer, you'll get like flatbed trailers and generator trailers and all kinds of trailers. So, you know, that's just a different designation than the box. Sure, they have the reasons why they do it, but it took me a little while to figure that out, so I thought I'd pass it along to you guys. Now, they do say this is a three-quarter ton capacity trailer, uh, loaded weight 2,860 pounds per this tag. However, I've heard from a lot of people that that's like an off-road rating, so you know you can't haul as much off-road as you can on-road because crap's like bouncing everywhere and it's really hard on the trailer. So the general explanation of what I've been told from the forums and the research I've done is you can load one of these trailers, probably not legally, but you can load one of these trailers theoretically until the, uh, the springs start to give. Evidently the springs are the weak link on these and there's some people online that claim to have had like four or five thousand pounds in these things, but I'm not convinced I want to push mine that far. Yeah, so this tag here, it's uh, its kind of painted over. It looks like this thing's been painted multiple times, but you can still see the delivery date of 7-90. So this is about the only thing on the trailer that I don't like. It doesn't have an actual jack. It just has this little leg that swings. You can see that pin you pull, and then it pivots on that uh, painted over bolt you see there. And from what I understand, these things were meant to be kept in like motor pools and storage depots and not really parked with a load in them. So, uh, you know, you just... If you're gonna put this on a truck, you and your like three strong army dude buddies just pick up the tongue and then you kick that leg in and lock it in place and you wrestle it around, set it on the thing, and then when you're done, you know, it's the reverse of that. But since I am gonna be parking this with a load in it and there's only one of me, I'm just gonna go ahead and weld a jack onto the uh, the side of this thing. Hopefully sometime this weekend if I get around to it. But that's really about the only change I'm gonna make since the previous owner did wire this for standard 12 volt lighting. So aside from being one of the nicest pulling trailers I have ever hauled, which really surprised me, uh, one of the other things I like about this thing is the size and the sturdiness of the frame on this beast. This is probably three or four inch channel iron. It's some really heavy duty stuff for comparison. I'd say it's about three times the thickness of the, uh, the frame on that Silverado that we chopped up last fall. Really, really, really heavy duty stuff. And this is of course the frame. Now the sides on this thing, they look like they're just a tad bit thinner than an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna say they're probably about 12 gauge or so in thickness, I haven't measured them to be honest. And uh, I really like this because I, I hate cheap crap even when it's affordable. And so that's why I didn't wanna buy a regular like commercial or consumer grade trailer because I've worked on a lot of them and they're not, I don't think they're made very well. If you have a good one, great. I know there's some out there, but they can be pretty hard to find, especially after people have beat on them and, and you're buying them used. 
So we have uh, this heavy duty side panel here and then we also have these D-rings which I thought were kind of cool or clevises I guess those are technically called. There's four of these. There's two on the back of this thing and then two on the front which I think is really cool so maybe it's meant to be like picked up with uh, with cranes and whatnot but that's not something you see every day. And this thing does have what I believe are these LED lights here as well. Like I said the guy rewired this. From what I understand most of the, uh, the army trucks and whatnot use 24 volt systems whereas a normal you know standard pickup truck like mine uses a 12 volt so you can rewire them I think this guy just put some different lights on it and so now we have these as well uh, one of the other things I like about this trailer is that it came with the tarp and with the uh, the little loops that support the tarp which we'll discuss momentarily here the guy I bought this from was really cool I liked him a lot he described this thing as his rolling tool shed from what he said, he uh, he bought it and he used it to move, and then when he was done moving, he just never bothered to unload it. So when I went to look at it, it was like full of power tools and and fuel cans and and camping supplies and garage type stuff. So uh, we unloaded all that, and yeah, he said it was his rolling tool shed. This tarp is in really good condition. It's worth probably two to four hundred dollars by itself. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list this on eBay and try and sell it and recoup some of the money I spent on this trailer, which honestly wasn't very much, especially for how how sturdy it is. And uh, so hopefully someone can get some use out of it because I know if I keep it here, it's gonna like catch on fire or it's gonna get destroyed or it's gonna get put in a box and forgot about until it's old and rotten and everything. So yeah, it's uh, it's coming apart really well. It's tied to each of these little loops like six different ways from Sunday, but we're, we're getting it off. So this trailer also has this uh, these stake sides, I guess you could call them. I don't know if they're originally off this trailer or what, because they're obviously not the same color. But this upper tailgate, as you can see, is just held together, held in place rather, with these three little pins. And this whole system is is really simple, and it's also really sturdy, despite the fact that this trailer is almost 30 years old. Everything is still in close to mint condition. Now the sides on this thing, I don't know what they're made out of exactly. They're certainly not wood, uh, they're not aluminum, they're, I'm going to say some type of fiberglass composite or whatever, but uh, yeah, so to open the tailgate on this thing, there's just these two little pins and they have that little flat spot that sticks out on each side, and once you get both of those out of the way, then the tailgate basically just uh, just opens up real nice, and then we can take a look at the bed on this. So what I discovered is the bed on this thing is about 8 feet long, I'm guessing this was probably made from a single 8 foot long piece of material. Because you can see here, you can fit something in this that's 8 feet long, but it is going to be really, really close, and you would probably have to find a way to do it with the tailgate down. 65 inches! And 45 inches! So there you go. If you, like me, ever wondered how wide one of these things is, there you go. Now, it's probably not going to be the greatest thing for moving pieces of plywood and whatnot, but like I said, I was looking for something with sides that was very, very sturdy and very heavy duty that I could use to haul some of the scrap metal that the shop generates because the, uh, the pickup bed trailer that we built a month or so ago is already like at 120% capacity or something. And this is what I found, and I, like I said, I absolutely love it. For the price I paid, it was very, very reasonable, and you can still find these things from various online surplus businesses and auctions or whatever. Now this one, I was lucky I was able to find it pretty reasonably on my local Craigslist of all places. And because of that, it was already titled and registered and fully street legal and wired for a normal vehicle and everything. So really all I had to do was uh, was just go pick it up. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually really tempted to buy a second one of these and turn it into a welding trailer, like put the trailblazer in it perhaps. And pretty much the only thing this needs is a holder on it for the spare tire. And we'll, I guess, have to weld one of those up here sooner or later. So I'd just like to thank you guys for watching and have fun. Stay safe. Hope you enjoyed this video. You're going to see this in a lot more videos.